Yeah, so the Fremen make a time compass. I didn't really understand how it works. Let's listen. It's a paracompass. The moons here have a magnetic field, so a simple compass needle won't point north. It takes a clever piece of clockwork to sort it out. So he says it's clockwork. Does that mean it's a time piece? Somehow using some like inertial navigation unit plus time I guess to maybe, orient I guess, itself? I guess maybe, but let's let's break it down to like chronologically as I said it. So it's a compass. So mm -hmm. there, we're expecting magnetic fields. And so I guess on Earth, we have an Earth magnetic field that points north to south. And then you have a little piece of little little sliver, little needle of magnet that's also magnetized. And so it'll align itself to Earth's magnetic field. And therefore, you can figure out what north is. And so so this is a compass. Um, I guess Arrakis has a magnetic field. Sure. OK, I can roll with that. And then Duncan then says that, but the moons have their own magnetic fields. So when they're whipping around Arrakis, their magnetic field is strong enough to to um, affect the, where the compass is pointing, and so then you can't read it correctly. Now, I thought that Duncan said clockwork, as in terms of like generic like mechanisms inside, but maybe maybe you're right that clockwork actually means like timepiece, because if you know where the moons are at any given time, uh -huh. you can then weigh how important their magnetic fields are, and then you can like uh -huh. subtract it off, and then you get like Arrakis magnetic okay. field. Maybe, maybe that sounds really plausible. So the timepiece is to track the moons, so we can the compass can compensate for the moon where the moon's positions and the field right. it generates. So if we know that the moon is at this location compared to where you are, then it's going to have a 50% effect. If it's on the other side of the planet, then it has a 20% or something like that, mm. maybe. I see. I, I, I like that explanation. With, although that means that the compass also needs to know where you are at all times. That's true. It needs to know. Yeah, it needs you, to know where you are. On It needs to know you're lat long. So. Yep. You know what? It, you, you, would, you would need a fancy piece of clockwork in there. But th but then that means we have some kind of uh, GPS location, which means yep. satellites, which means sure. internet tech kinds of stuff. We, we, I don't need a compass. That's right. Wait, wait, I don't even need a compass because there's no cloudy days. I have I can see the moons, I can see the sun, I can That's see right. the stars at night. There's very you, rarely talk, cloudy. Oh wait, no, you're talking about like storms. you're talking about you're talking about like the age of what is it? The age of ocean faring. What is this yeah. called? The sailboat times. Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. Like, like, so during the day, you can figure out the sun's rising from east to west. And then you're mm -hmm. like, well, it's about half day, so it's right above me. So then that's, mm -hmm. I guess that's a really bad example. It's sun, <laughs> sunrise. So I know that's east, mm -hmm. so therefore that's north, south. Is it? And, and then at nighttime, you know where the stars are, so you can navigate by the stars. Yeah. And so if there's no clouds, this is when you need a compass. But sorry, if there are clouds and you can't see the sun, then that's when you need a compass. Yeah. But I actually take it back. Because there are no clouds, but there are sandstorms. And I guess they could last for days. So you're inside a yeah. sandstorm. And you're like, how am I going to orient myself? You need a compass. Need a compass. Yeah. So I like this. The, we need a compass because of the sandstorms. And then because of the complex magnetic fields of the moons and Arrakis itself, we need to keep track of time so that we know, to, so we can keep track of the orbits of the moons so we can compensate for their, their differing positions. But then how do we know our lat long? I have no idea. I'll also say there's another way that this might be useful. It's because when you're inside the city and they like close all the windows from the sun because it's too hot, mm -hmm. how do you know where you're going? Because you're like inside a box. Like, how do you know, right? But if you have a magnetic field thing that you can figure out where is north and south, then you can navigate the city. Uh -huh. So everywhere, <laughs> everyone inside there, they're like, I'm going north for a bit until I find the thing. Yeah. There's definitely no street signs. Like there's no like just drawn out map of the city. Right. <laughs> You're saying inside the city there are no signs. They just use the para compass. Yep. Cuz they can't see, they can't see outside. They can't figure out where the sun is. They can't see where the stars are cuz they're inside that ugly city. Which means if they don't have maps and they don't have signs and they don't have streets they need a power compass. <laughs> power compass, right? <laughs> if I was underground in a nuclear bump bunker and I didn't have like a map, like what would I do? A compass, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, at least to orient which way I'm facing. There's definitely no way that I could have like a sign that says like the kitchen's this way. <laughs> right. I guess. Now I'm thinking about for lat long. If you 
go to a place where you know the lat long and you can punch it in to the compass. Okay. okay. And then it has an inertial navigation unit which keeps track of accelerations. Oh. Okay. It'll have some drift, mm -hmm. but you can generally keep track of your lat long for say some some period of time before it drifts too far. But if you can reorient, punch in the new where you, you know you are, then you should be okay. So you're saying if on Arrakis, there's like, say, let's say there's two big cities. You got the capital city and city, you know, big. Yeah. And then if you, you like know the lat long of these two cities, and then you only really need to worry about going in between these two, then mm -hmm. this inertial timing piece can yeah. figure out like, well, you're somewhere in there. That's fine. Yeah. And so in the air, you can keep, you could probably calibrate like how much error do I have if I haven't calib like repunched in a, a lat long for two days, then I get plus or minus, you know, a kilometer. So I know that's that's good enough for me to orient myself. I'm good, but maybe after a month, it's like plus or minus the radius of the planet. I need I need to go recalibrate. I could see that working. It just would take a fancy piece of clockwork. Fancy piece, yeah, exactly. <laughs>